Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're looking at a problem that was very similar to what we saw before, but this time we fall into a trap. We fall into a situation which we cannot use the law of science. So if you haven't already, please have a look at when we solve this problem in a different setup. And the setup was that we had a different set of information. Now it's the same problem, but we have different information to start with and we're not able to solve the law of science. So what we're going to have to do is use the law of cosines. And we also did a video on it, refresher. So if you haven't seen that, I'm also going to link it up here. So if you need to refresh yourself on what is the law of cosines and how to use it, just jump in the uh, card below, uh, below uh, above, sorry, in the top right corner. Okay, so problem statement reads, a disabled automobile is pulled by means of two ropes as shown. Knowing that the tension in rope AB is 3 kilonewtons, determine by trigonometry the tension in rope AC and the value of alpha, so that the resultant force exerted in A is a 4.8 kilonewton force directed along the axis of the automobile. Okay, so we have a car, and it's the same setup as before, right? We had the two ropes. The two ropes before we had needed to find out what was the tension on one of them so that the resulting force was going to be um, right along the axis of the car. We talked about how this is a, a force test. Now, another direction there, because the car is reacting to these forces. Um, but this time, it's slightly different because we also need to find out one of them, right? AC in this case. But we want to find out AC so that this guy here is 4.8 kilonewtons, right? So we want this one to be 4.8 kilonewtons, okay? Now, let's set this up um, normally, and we're going to go, you know, fall into the trap on purpose kind of thing together, and then we do, you know, we solve, we go to the, the part in which we actually solve it, okay? So I'm going to point, put uh, point 0.8, which is just, just the, uh, the, the edge of the car there, and I'm going to do my 3 kilonewtons here, three kilonewtons there, three kilonewtons, and then we have, no, that has an, there's a angle with 30, there's an angle with 30 degrees here with the horizontal, and then I am after a force of 4.8 here as the resultant, resultant of what? Of the three kilonewtons and another force here, which is a unknown force. Is there a name for that force? It's AC, right? Because this is point C here, so this is force AC. So basically, if I were to take this guy here, copy it, and paste it, right, and plug it in here, we would have a resulting force, right, but like so. However, that's not what I want. I want a force that actually makes the resultant force this one here, right, 4.8, right on the direction. So in other words, I want a force AC that finishes this triangle like so. That's what I want to do, right? I want to know what is the force that I need to be able to get this result right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Let me go ahead and copy this. And then I'm going to go and paste this. And this is what I'm going to put here. Because this is the one that I want. Get rid of the one I just drew before. Okay, do you get the difference? Hopefully you do. The idea is that I don't have one force there and I'm trying to try the resultant. I actually want the resultant and therefore I'm going to get the force that makes that happen. Okay, so if I copy paste that, I'm going to get that resultant. And obviously, you know, if you haven't noticed before, if I do the opposite, I should do exactly the same result, right? So if I get this force here and I put it here, it should also fall right there. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to solve. For that, I get a force triangle like before. Here I have AC. Here I have 4.8, it's here already, so let me just go ahead and, since it's blue, place it here, okay, and oops, and angle-wise, I know this is 30, but I don't know anything else, because this one here, they just gave us alpha, so they just say this is alpha here, this is alpha, okay, so if this is alpha, then this is alpha here, or uh, this is, I'm going to put it over here, this guy here is alpha, that guy is alpha, then this guy here is alpha too. And note that I have two unknown angles because I don't know what this guy here is. I don't know what alpha is. I just know the 30. Okay, so if I try to apply the law of science now, 
look what's going to happen. The sine of 30 is the one related to the force AC. Okay, the sine of alpha is related to the force of 3 kilonewtons. And the sign now, let's give this guy a name. Um, let's give this guy a name. Let's call this guy beta. Beta. And the sign of beta is related to my force 4.8 kilonewtons. And it looks like this is all good, and we could use this to solve, but we can't, right? Because we have three equations here and three unknowns. Uh, well, have two equations and three unknowns kind of thing, right? If I had two of these values on the same side, I have th sine of 30 with the three on the same side, I could solve this with small signs. If I had the 4.8 and the sine of 30, that could solve it. Because they're each in one equation, I can't really solve it, right? Because if I try to do this equation here, I get one equation and I have two unknowns. If I try to do this one here, same thing, one equation, two unknowns. If I try to do, obviously, this one equals this one, same thing, one equation, two unknowns. So in spite of, you know, having the three equations, quote, unquote, <clears throat> I'm not able to solving this with the law of signs. Therefore, what I need to do, right, so this is not going to help us, at least not for now. So what I need to do is use the law of cosines, right? So once again, that's why we did a full video here on law of cosines. If you want to check it out, to remind yourself, the law of cosines works precisely on this kind of situation. Because what we have here is, let me redraw my triangle. So I have this, this, and this. I know I have this side of 4.8, and I have this side of 3, and I have this one angle of 30. <clears throat> that's precisely where the law of cosines comes in. Because what I can do is, this is the side unknown, right? This is my, call it C. This is the equivalent of my gamma on the other one. And I know that C equals the square root of A square plus B square minus 2AB cosine of gamma. This is my A. This is my B. And by the way, it doesn't matter, right? This could be B. This could be A. This doesn't change anything. Um, so A, B, gamma. I have all those. And I can find what is C. Okay, so translating that to our problem, this is, um, what's it called? AB, AC. This is my AC in the problem. So translating this equation is going to be AC, my force AC equals to the square root of 3 squared plus 4.8 squared minus 2 times 3 times 4.8 times the cosine of 30 degrees. Take the square root of the, all that, and I get that AC we get that AC equals 2.66. 2.66. Obviously, the units has to be the same. Kilonewtons. If you want to check, we can check that. We're taking kilonewtons squared plus kilonewtons squared, multiplying kilonewtons by kilonewtons, so we get squared again. And then we're taking the square root of that, so we get kilonewtons at the end, right? Um, so this is... What is the force required to be able to have a resultant of 4.8 kilonewtons, right? The um, other thing they're asking for is angle alpha, if you recall. If you go back, let's see here. So we need to find what is the tension in AC, and we just did, 2.66 kilonewtons, and also the value for alpha. Okay, and alpha is obviously this guy here, and we couldn't solve it here because we didn't have enough, but now we do, right? Because now, I'm going to go ahead and copy this, set in that word. Where we are? Here we go. Okay. Now we do, because now instead of having this, what we do have is AC is 2.66. So now I can happily use this equation here, right? And this equation is going to tell me that the sine of alpha will be equal to the sine of 30 times 2.66 kilonewtons divided by 3 kilonewtons, so the units go away. And therefore, what I'm trying to find is the arc sine of 
sine of 30 2.66 divided by 3 which equals alpha which equals alpha which equals comma which equals alpha which equals what did I get? Um, 34.28 approximately 34.28 degrees and that's going to be my answer right there all right so what does that tell us well when you get stuck with this a law of science the law of cosines can help you out um, it also tells us that if we want the final force pulling this car to be exactly on the direction on the axis of this car and I want this force to be 4.8 kilonewtons then in addition to the 3 kilonewtons I have pushing here I need to have a tension 2.66 kilonewtons pushing at an angle of about 34 degrees from the horizontal right here and that's going to enable me to get the um, resulting force that I want Okay, so I hope this was useful. If you have any questions, as per usual, just leave them down below in the comment section. If this video was helpful, consider giving it a like, and we'll talk soon.